Lord God, may we, your people, who look forward to the birthday of Christ, experience the joy of salvation and celebrate that feast with love and thanksgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, or the Sunday of joy. And what joyous occasion it is for us, for we get to celebrate Mass once again indoor, and especially when the weather outside is frightful, it's very comfortable for us to be back indoor and very joyous for us indeed. And it is today that we hear that call to rejoice. Rejoice for the Lord is coming. Rejoice for he will bring us that peace and that love that we seek for within our lives. And so let us together acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to enter into the most sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lived it, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. He has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light. He came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem and priests and Levites came to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, who are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? 
He answered, No. So they said to him, What are you? Who are you? So we, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet has said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, John the Baptist, the man who wore a garment of camel's hair and lived on locusts and wild honey, a man that we might call a bit of a fanatic, is portrayed as the one sent by God, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light only a witness to speak for the light. And in obedience to God, John the Baptist proclaimed the light that was to come in the person of Jesus Christ, the one true guiding light. Follow me, says the Lord Jesus, and I will give you light. I will guide you through the dark nights of your soul and I will give you meaning and purpose for your life. Follow my light and see that I am with you through your tears and fears and disappointments. Follow my light and let it flow through your heart and destroy the darkness there. We anticipate with joy the coming of the wonderful bright light of Christmas. When the Christmas season comes around, we are attracted to the light of the Christ. We find comfort in the sunshine of Christmas goodwill. But when the holy day is over, we tend to put the Christmas spirit back on hold. And in so doing, we thwart the very purpose of Christmas. In giving his son as the light of the world, God's purpose is to transform us into children of light, giving us the power to radiate his love from moment to moment and forever in our lifetime. Are you prepared to search for the light, the light of the world, through the darkness of your tears and your fears and your heartaches and your disappointments? Are you prepared to let the light flow through every crevice of your soul so intensely that it will radiate into your family, home, household, and beyond into the neighborhood? and to the world. Are you prepared to receive the Christ child in your heart, in the spirit of complete faith and trust? God is sending us into the world to be witnesses of the light of Christ. You shall be my witnesses 
to the ends of the earth, Jesus says to us, his followers. And in obedience to his command, we go out and minister in love and to bind up wounds and to be a sign of unity and reconciliation in a world where people are so estranged from one another, married couples, families, friends, races, nations, churches. In obedience, we go out as witness to what God is doing through the light of Christ to harmonize all of mankind in peace, brotherhood, and love. And yet, we are reminded in this little rhyme, we all too often hesitate. He slept beneath the moon. He basked beneath the sun. He lived a life of going to do and died with nothing done. Follow me, says the Lord Jesus, and I will give you light. Follow my light, says the Lord Jesus, and let it flow in your heart and destroy the darkness there. Mary received the light from God. And she would follow the light, and as Mary has followed the light, we should follow it with a glimmer of hope. As a community of faith, we have seen the guiding light that comes to us as no other in a gloriously different way, not to the head, but straight to the heart. And may God bless you. Hoping in that light of God, let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Seeking for that light and that hope, let us now lift up our prayers at the needs of our community. That under the protection of Christ, our times may be peaceful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Christ may guide the minds of those who govern us to promote the common good according to his will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That Christ may banish disease, drive out hunger, and ward off any affliction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. That Christ may find us watching when he comes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the safety of all our health care workers, servicemen and women, and for all police and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
for comfort and healing for the sick in our community, for strength for those who care for them, a quick end to the pandemic, and for wisdom for those making decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For today's Mass intentions, for the speedy recovery of Carlos Navarro, for the repose of the souls of Alice Peters, Jan Merino, Matthew Montoya, Asla Greta Trenka, Francis Grasser, Joseph Mulberger, Frank and Sophie Naranjo, and the repose of the souls of those who have passed away due to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our silent intentions of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Stir up your might, O Lord. Give your church the power to transform hearts, so that we will serve you now and praise you forever and ever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as I prepare the altar. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. And let us go forth following the light of Christ. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.